Hey buddies, Potato McWhiskey here and welcome to Let's Play Civilization 6 as China. I wanted to take a moment to kind of talk about my current plan. My plan is to extend this great wall all the way to this tile right here and then all the way along to this aluminum tile as well. Then I also want to fill in this area up here with a bunch of these colossal heads and some forests and I also want to finish off filling in some great walls in over here on my second continent. I kind of want to get rid of these two archaeological sites to fill in this great wall and then pretty much any other remaining land I'm going to be putting forests and or colossal heads to try to just eke out that extra little bit of tourism because right now I don't really need to do any long-term investments. Right now, my biggest thing is I just want to generate as much culture as possible. If I can get more culture, that means I win the game faster. So it doesn't really make sense to invest in anything but culture, considering I'm so close to winning. We have just unlocked steel, which gives us the Eiffel Tower, as well as plus one production on all of our lumber mill improvements. That's a significant boost to all of the production in our empire. If I take a moment, uh, we also stole some gold. If I take a moment to just look over here, you can see these lumber mills are now highly valuable. This one is on a Plains Hill producing one food, six production, which is actually technically better than these mines over here. However, I don't think it's really worth the builder charges to delete the mine, place a forest and then a lumber mill. Um, except in very rare circumstances where you also get advantage from the appeal uh, or adjacency for colossal heads, for example, like over here. Now, with the finishing of the Eiffel Tower, that's pretty much it tech tree wise. We don't really need anything else. I'm just going to go ahead and reveal oil, pick up uranium, and maybe we could... M and the reason I want to pick these up is because it's going to reveal those resources, which will then allow me to gather them, sell them to the AI, and produce all sorts of extra yields. Because if I right-click on the uranium, it'll take me to the Civilopedia, and you can see any tile with the uranium on it will produce plus two production. We've completed the western end of this Great Wall, which uh, technically also provides us with a really good defensive uh, area to like fight against the AI, although nobody's going to declare war on me because I'm allied with everyone in the game. And here are these insane trade routes that I wanted to take a moment to talk about. Plus seven food, plus seven production, 33 gold, two science, and one faith. I'm going to put this one over in Khufu because a couple of the cities over here definitely need trade routes to help them finish off what they're doing. And the unfortunate thing is we'll no longer be able to build any more walls because we did just finish steel but we got almost all of our walls finished and we will eventually be able to finish the renaissance walls in here for example Shinchan has reached level three i'm going to go ahead and take the ace driver promotion which means that we can have a much easier time escaping if we are caught and manage to get away there is the cold war this gives me access to some actually pretty powerful cards as well as an additional spy if i can ever find time to build it we get access to the rock band from uh, unit here as well and cryptography is really, really powerful in a defensive sense, as is containment for taking over city-states. And I don't think anyone else has democracy as a government right now. So if I wanted to plug in containment and take control of all of the city-states right now, that's what I could do. And that's why I'd been holding back on actually spending my envoys, because I didn't need to. And if I wait until I have containment, I can do incredible things. I'm going to take out skyscrapers just for one or two turns and plug in containment and then swing up here. And if I put a single envoy in here, you'll see it goes up to six. So I probably only need to put a few envoys in here. And then I have full control of Nazca and I'll do the exact same thing with Kabul. There you go. In a single turn, I took a suzerainty of every city state in the game. And they all belong to me. I just finished a archeological museum in Taiyuan. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the archaeologist in here and this one I'm going to send over to this eastern area and I also wanted to come into my capital and go ahead and purchase the zoo because that'll give me even more amenities which will bring me up to a plus 10% production bonus uh, in this city thanks to the positive amenities. I also need to sort out a um, I need to sort out a neighborhood in here at some point. I'm not sure where I'm going to put it. Um, probably the best place to put it is on one of these mines in here like maybe this one right here i trade five production but i get access to a ton more population room and i'll be able to work some of these things in here i also wanted to get a commercial hub in the city but 
you know, I'm trying to find time to build these things. I'm kind of tempted to take some more tiles for this city just so that it has even more room and turn this into like a mega city uh, that has like a ton of districts. So I think that seems pretty reasonable to do. Also, this city has 100 production, by the way, right now. Like just these trade routes are insane, dude. Six food, seven production in this city. That's like working two grassland hills with mines on them in the early game. Like it's, it's crazy powerful, the sheer amount that you can get out of them. Speaking of alliances, I'm going to go ahead and declare friendship with Norway. Uh, not declare war, sorry, excuse me. <laughs> I, want to, I want to get an alliance with them. Oh, they actually won't do an alliance with me. Well, how about if I give them 100 gold? Would that make them a little bit more friendly? Yeah, I think they, they might go ahead and take my alliance next turn. They might even offer it to me in between turns. I'm also spending a little bit of time buying tiles and improving my uh, fishing resources because those have pretty good return on investment. And I know it's pretty far into the game, so I'm not going to get a huge amount out of them. It's still like one of the most invaluable uh, investments that I can make. And there you go. Like I predicted, Norway is asking me to be his friend again. Okay, so I'm a little bit worried people are going to vote for um, great riders to get banned again. That would be really, 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 really annoying. I'm going to try to vote like put all my points into great general and hope that that overrides whatever everyone else votes for. And then otherwise, I just don't really care about religion. Um, I might just like try to say ban Protestantism. Ah, uh, God damn it. Looks like great writers were picked again. Ah, uh, if I had voted in favor of great generals, America would have actually gone with me. So I made a bit, I actually kind of shot myself in the foot there. If I had it voted, if I had it voted positively, we would have been just fine. But because I voted negatively, um, it didn't work out for me, which really, really sucks. And great works of music are kind of a lot like great works of writing in that there's no cooldown to moving them. So I usually just make them in my capital and then kind of ferry them out to wherever they need to go. Right now I'm at my cap, so I will need another broadcast center. Uh, you know what? I might just go ahead and purchase one. Changsha is probably as good a place as any to purchase it. Although, let's see, Chengdu, were you working on one yet? You're already building one, Guanshu. So I guess I'll purchase it in Changsha and that'll give me another place to put my great works of music. I also need to start thinking about how I'm going to spend this faith and I have a plan in mind. I'm going to send all of my rock bands towards America. Just going to buy as many of these rock bands as possible in all of these cities. Uh, probably going to buy maybe one or two per turn. There's no need to buy them all at once. We just grabbed another relic. Uh, and I also, oh, I almost forgot to actually get my alliance with Norway there. There you are. Thank you for your alliance. But yeah, I just grabbed another relic, which means I have another museum fully finished out and furnished. Let's see, can I do a swap here? I have two ancient artifacts. So do I have another ancient one laying around? And I do, it's from Harald Hardrada. But I, I, need a, I need an ancient artifact from another player to be able to fill this in. If I could get a barbarian ancient artifact, that would be perfect. And then I have a bunch of Renaissance and classical artifacts here. But as I fill up more of my museums, theming them will get easier. If you are wondering why I build water parks and tourism games, it's partially for the amenities. And it's also partially to be able to build the Ferris wheel. The Ferris wheel gives you plus two tourism. It's not a huge amount. It's a pretty tourism inefficient investment. But two tourism and an extra amenity is pretty valuable. It's basically just a way to transmute my production into tourism. The first set of rock bands are moving out towards America. And it looks like I could do indie rock, but I don't think there's really a city that I could loyalty flip here. I might go ahead and take space rock. I think they have some pretty good campuses around. Best way to check is to click on the empire map mode button. And actually they don't have any campuses except over here. Well, if that's the case, maybe goes to 11. I feel like goes to 11 is, eh, it's probably not terrible to pick up goes to 11 here. So we'll take goes to 11 and this will be Petit Machine. Another spy completed. Let's have a look around and see who we could maybe steal from. I think I'm already stealing from Washington. So that's not necessary. I'm not stealing from Canada, am I? Toronto might not be a bad spot. It's only 300 gold to steal. Nidoros, I think I'm already stealing from. So that's not necessary. And I have suzerainty over every city state. So I don't need to do anything there. Uh, maybe I'll just keep stealing gold from America to try to hurt them as much as possible. With this rock band right here, I think I'm going to go ahead and take religious rock. There's an interesting idea to be able to convert their cities. Probably not going to get me a whole lot of tourism, but maybe it'll be annoying. I kind of uh, consciously made the decision not to do any um, national park stuff this game because I wanted to really just take a moment and show off 
how good rock bands can be for targeting a particular player uh, in a tourism game. Now, America's tourism has jumped up quite a bit, or their culture, sorry, which means it might be good to check and see if I could steal some more of these great works. I don't quite have the room for them, so I would need to get a couple more archaeology uh, or, or art museum, sorry. And I think I have an art museum finishing here and I have an art museum finishing here. I think I already have an art museum over in Shenyang. So really, it's only going to happen for me if I promote Reina and use her to purchase theater squares. Because building theater squares at this stage of the game is just going to take too long. You kind of need to purchase them when you're this deep into the game. Perfect. We managed to pick up the Crystal Redentor. And what this does is that it increases the tourism output from relics and holy cities. Sorry, uh, it, it prevents that from being reduced by the Enlightenment Civic, but the most important effect here is the plus 100% tourism from seaside resorts across my nation. If I jump out of here, and uh, also we picked up refining so we have access to oil, we can take a moment to look around for oil in a moment, but um, more importantly, if I go into my tourism map mode by pressing the 7 hotkey and hover over these seaside resorts, you can see now I'm generating 10 tourism from these. So what's happening here is the... Uh, seaside Resort is generating a baseline of 4. That's then being multiplied by 25% by the Computer Civic. That is then being multiplied by the Crystal Redentor, which is getting me 10 tourism per Seaside Resort. That 10 tourism, like we talked about earlier, is then being filtered out over to each individual player, generating pressure against them to steal their tourists, which is netting me a ton of tourism for every civilization. I think on order, I think this single Seaside Resort, um, if, we, if we think about the raw numbers, right? There's five players in the game, it's applying 10 tourism to all players. Uh, so it's generating 15... I think we think we already did the maths. It's like 75 tourism per turn. Uh, I need 1,200 tourism total generated across my empire to get a tourist from another player. So roughly speaking, this seaside resort, I think it's uh, it'd be about every 15 turns, this seaside resort is stealing one of the tourists that I'm getting from these other players. And that's, that's just like, you can make these things so crazy efficient. And we're not even finished because if I manage to get my hands on the Eiffel Tower, that just becomes even more ridiculous. There's also a uh, great engineer here that I wanted to pick up and I wanted to double check if I haven't missed any because I could also use my gold to start buying some of these guys. Like getting the factory and workshop instantly would be pretty nice as well as the plus two production from factories. And I also kind of want to get Albert Einstein if I could. And then also I could potentially decide to faith purchase Mary Shelley. But I think great rider wise, I think they kind of fall off in, in importance at this point in the game. So I'm kind of okay with them being banned. I've got a lot of options open to me and I'm not sure what I want to do exactly to push towards the late game. Ah, oh my god, we got one of the best ones. Um, Entertainment Complex and Album Cover Art, these are both really, really good. Anything that makes your uh, guy perform at a higher level is really valuable, especially World Wonders, because the AI tends to like to build a lot of World Wonders. So I'm going to go ahead and confirm the name is Traditional Gold, grab Album Cover Art. It's only plus one level, but that does significantly reduce the chance that your rock band dies. Now, this is the guy who goes to 11, so I want to ideally use him over here on Stonehenge because that's within range of three sieves, which means I'll get extra tourism pressure from it propagating out to other civilizations. I really need Norway to leave so I can improve this crabs, goddammit. All right, nice. There is rapid deployment. I could maybe go for the Amundsen Scott Research Station. I don't think it's necessary, but uh, rapid deployment is nice because... Uh, let me scroll all the way down to the end of the tech tree. It leads to environmentalism. So I'm going to pick up environmentalism. Then I'm going to go ahead and pick up space race for the extra tourism from great works of music. Then I'm going to head for social media to get the 50% tourism output against civilizations that I have a trade route with. Also, I think I may have accidentally broken my trade route with America. So I'm going to want to get myself another trader ASAP. I don't know why I say ASAP when I could just say ASAP. But yeah, I'm going to take out the containment card because it's no longer required. I have suzerainty of every uh, city-state in the game. And I'm just going to plug in skyscrapers so I can build Eiffel Tower a turn or two sooner. I just completed an art museum in Longxi. So I'm going to go ahead and talk to America and see if he'll sell me a couple of his great works. I'd like... So he won't sell me the sculptures and he won't sell me any of these. I think that's because he senses that he's really close to losing or that I'm really close to winning, so they won't sell me them anymore, which is unfortunate, but we did manage to steal a bunch of them before he noticed. I could build a really dumb Panama Canal here, 
but I'll probably just go ahead and work on a bit of builder to finish out improving this territory here. Most of my land now is basically where I want it to be. And what's really cool over here, you can see these aren't amazing tiles, but they have generated a decent amount of tourism, like 200 here, 200 here, 100 here. So this is definitely a worthwhile investment uh, in terms of generating tourism. I think the Xingzhao, Xingzhao, uh, oh my god, I can't say the city's name. <laughs> um, I think this might be the best place to get myself a theater square. Um, purely because it actually has the production to do so. So I'm just going to crush that um, rice tile. Crushing uh, rice tile of China, forehead. Um, yeah, I'm going to crush that in here. And then I'll probably switch Reina out to another one of these cities. Um, where I'll be able to use my gold to purchase my theater square. I might even just swing her over to Nanjing right now. Um, but that's not really necessary until I get another governor title, which I won't be picking up another governor title until I get social media. I should have called these guys Spinal Tap, but it's Petty Machine. Let's see how they do. All right, nice. So they did a concert. They managed to generate 750 tourism, sold 50 albums. Now, that's 750 tourism. Generally speaking, that's only going to apply to America. But you have to remember, what we're trying to do when we're winning a tourism victory is we're trying to increase our visiting tourist number, uh, which is basically calculated as a certain amount of tourism pressure sent to another sieve, taking one of these numbers and putting it in my own little basket. So if I can generate enough direct tourism against Teddy Roosevelt using rock bands, I can actually bring down his number here while simultaneously bringing up my number here, which translates into this number being bigger, which means I'm sort of, I'm eating, I'm eating the sandwich from both ends, right? I'm not only am I reducing the total number that I need to win, I'm increasing the amount that I currently have. And that's the true power of rock bands. But anyway, let's go ahead and see if we can start converting some of America's cities with my rock band here. I'm going to go ahead and do a uh, concert on the Forbidden Palace. Also, I hate you, America, for building the Forbidden Palace. That was meant to be my wonder. Alien Penguin has done a concert and they generated 2000 tourism, but they died. But here's the really interesting thing. Um, this number might change after this turn. It, it typically, I don't know why it doesn't update mid turn. It usually only updates after the turn. I kind of wish I could see the effects of this stuff like midstream of a turn. But uh, yeah, I just lost a rock band. It's not the end of the world. We'll have more. So here's an interesting decision. Do I put the woods here to boost the two seaside resorts? Or do I put the um, Great Wall here to boost this Great Wall? So if I put the wall here, um, that would give me plus two, plus two. That would be four tourism per turn. Whereas if I put the woods here, that would give me plus one, plus one, which is then multiplied by the Crystal Red and Tor, which would also be four. But not only that, that could be further multiplied by multipliers more efficiently. So I think I'm going to plant the woods like I originally planned. There is another Renaissance barbarian artifact. I definitely, I definitely need more archaeologists. I've been kind of slacking on the archaeological front, but I have more and more rock bands swinging in here. Hmm. National parks and natural wonders. I don't think I see a whole lot of natural wonders over here. Let me have a quick search. The closest natural wonder is over here in the Upsoner Hollow. Uh, then there's the one in my capital. And then I think there is Singi over here, which I don't think you can do a concert at. So I think that's probably not going to be a great one. I'm going to instead go ahead and just take roadies so I can move this guy around a little bit faster. Now, this guy, on the other hand, is really good at performing concerts on Wonders. He has plus one level, which means he only has a 37% chance of dying. Traditional gold, how did you do? They died. They did get me 2000 tourism though, which is fantastic. And you can see here, if you remember earlier, this said 163. By generating a ton of tourism against Teddy Roosevelt, I have actually brought this number down. Wait, did it go down? God, I can't remember. We'll, we'll, we'll check it between turns. I'm panicking now. I'm panicking. Am I saying the right thing? Like, <laughs> my memory. <laughs> my memory is shot. Too much playing save, man. It's just all about that one more turn life, you know? All right, let's go ahead and perform a concert at this theater square. It's not a very good theater square because it's not fully built. Ah, oh, man, I should probably just do it at the Wonder because the Wonder ba generates a base of 1,000 tourism. So there's Petty Machine, and they generated 1,200 tourism and died. Nice. Ah, uh, great. Brilliant. You can probably hear 
from my voice how overjoyed I am with that result. Regardless, we're still generating a ton of extra tourism against Teddy. Alright, let's go ahead and keep fomenting unrest here. Ticking away nicely. So yeah, you can see the number has come down now. It's 161. And uh, we're apparently nine turns away from winning, which is not bad at all. All right, let's try hilarious dates at the Alhambra. No, let's try, let's try it at the Great Bat or the Hanging Gardens. All right, hilarious dates. You've got a ton of movement. How do you do? 750 tourism generated and 50 albums sold. I'm not really sure how the album sales thing works for these guys. Um, but, you know, I, th I think it's like it applies a modifier to their ability to generate. I don't know if that's like a baseline thing or how exactly it works. I've got another rock band here. This is going to be Furry Hunted. They are going to be... Well, I guess a pop star is pretty reasonable. Broadcast Center completed in Guangzhou. Let's get to work on the water park for the little bit of extra tourism that that will provide. We've got a Broadcast Center over here in Shanghai. So I have plenty of room for great works of writing. Or sorry, great works of music. So I'm going to do a couple of theater square festivals in a few different places where it makes sense. But mostly, I'm just kind of purchasing things like monuments and seaports, trying to make my tiles more valuable, uh, generate more yields in general. All right, this rock band seemed to have done okay. Let's go ahead and try the Jebel Barkal with them. Hilarious dates. How do you do? All right, let's have a look. Unit lost, but they did get me 2,500 tourism before they died. So we're continually suppressing their ability to generate defensive domestic tourists. You can see here, even though I've been consistently generating tourists against all these other players, America's number has been jumping up because I've been essentially, uh, think of like rock bands like tactical nukes, right? I'm, I'm tactically nuking him with my tourism to try to get as much tourism pressure against him in particular. I think I'm just having really bad luck with these wonders, so I'm gonna go run away somewhere else and see if I could do Rock Band. Uh, like, oh, like maybe uh, Stonehenge went well. Let's try Stonehenge again. I think I'm just getting really, really bad RNG. And I do, I do feel like the RNG on Rock Bands is is a little bit in an awkward spot. Like, I feel like they cost so much faith, uh, but their success rate is so low that it it's like uh, it it. It really doesn't feel good to build them. That's the best way I can describe it. I would, I kind of wish that the rewards from rock bands were a little bit lower and that the risks were a little bit lower. Just kind of lower that relationship a bit because it, it just, it doesn't feel so good to invest so much into rock bands and then have every single one of them just roll poorly and die. Brilliant. Here is environmentalism. That gets me another 25% tourism across my empire, which is now bringing me up to 1,000 tourism per turn. If I go to the tourism map mode, I can swing in and take a look at some of these things. For example, like these seaside resorts, they're now generating 12 tourism per turn. Things like the Hermitage are now generating uh, 34 tourism per turn if you add up all the numbers there. My actual cities, which is really, really cool. Let me see if I can find a city that I can use as a good example. I built... Remember, I built uh, ancient walls, medieval walls, renaissance walls in each of my cities. Now they're generating nine tourism per turn. And that nine tourism per turn is generating against all the other saves in the game. So you'll start to see like all of my cities are starting to fill up with tourists. I'm starting to take tourists from other players. My whole empire is basically designed to distract Americans away from their country. Which probably wouldn't work very well because I don't think many Americans actually have passports. Let's go ahead and purchase ourselves another archaeological museum, which is now cheaper, by the way, remember, since we're playing uh, with democracy at the moment. And we'll go ahead and send him out to pick up some of these shipwrecks and stuff like that. I could go ahead and change my government. I think I did... No, sorry, it wasn't Space Race I picked up. I picked up Environmentalism. Yeah, so I will swap in the card for that in a moment. Here's a really uh, interesting thing that, that a lot of players don't usually get to see. Um, when you're in, like, the, the very late game, of developing a city in Civ 6, in particular a coastal city. Aquariums are actually really, really powerful, not only for the amenity, but they give you plus one science to each coastal resource reef uh, tile in the city. So if I go ahead and pick up the aquarium, you can kind of see I'm getting a little bit of extra science. It's not amazing. It's not like game breaking, but it is a cool little thing that I don't think a whole lot of players get to see that little bit of extra science. Where that would be particularly powerful for me is over in the city of Chengdu, for example, to make these yields look even crazier. Like the mausoleum alone is uh, just doing wild things for this city. But yeah, let's go ahead and pick up the seaport in here. I guess I could build a neighborhood because I should be picking up shopping malls soon. 
At this point of the game, it's really just about kind of making your last few decisions uh, with each turn because um, we're reaching a point of the game now where any decisions I make, they're not going to pay off for a very long turn time, right? If there's only 10 turns left in the game, any decisions I make now don't matter. Wait. Oh my God, there's a privateer still in that time. But yeah, so basically any decisions I make now, there's not a whole lot of turns that those decisions are going to be sort of paying off for me, right? Um, so the the importance of each decision diminishes significantly the, the longer the game goes on. It's not really a flaw with the game. It's kind of just built in to uh, 4X games, unfortunately. Um, it's kind of hard to actually really solve that problem. It's actually a big problem in the, um, the board game, the board game design uh, sort of space, because there's... Oh, I need to get these walls filled in here ASAP. So I need a builder over there. Hold on. Uh, you, can you get over to this city in a reasonable amount? I'm going to jump you in the water because you're faster in water. I need to get these uh, oh, great walls extended out here. But yeah, it's, it's actually a really... The, the point I was making there is that um, there's, this, there's this problem in, in board game design that you're going to run into if you if you play board games or you make board games or whatever, is that oftentimes what happens is... The game is over before the game is over. Like, the winner has been decided, and yet players still have to play. So I just used another rock band there, and they failed. Unit lost, but I did get another bunch of tourism against Teddy Roosevelt. But yeah, so, so, so the basic idea is, um, the game is over, right? The, the game is over, someone has won, yet people are still forced to play through, uh, say, like 20 to 30% of your game's, like, playtime. And it's, al it's already very clear who has won the game. And that's why things like um, hidden victory conditions became very popular, because even though it could be decided, you know, with 20 to 30% of the playtime uh, left to go, you don't know that. And there's a bit of mystery because you have your own hidden victory conditions, so you could be playing to your own strengths. And you might not know that you're gonna lose, but it's far more fun to not know if you're gonna lose and continue to play than it is to know you're going to lose and continue to play. Like one of those is very obviously more fun than the other. I'm going to try to build the Sydney Opera House. It's never going to get finished, but I'll give it a go. And so that was something that like a lot of board game designers started coming up with. And that's why a lot of uh, sort of board games now have, have those things like hidden victory conditions or random victory conditions so that you have to play in different ways as you play them. I think one of the best examples of that is, um, oh God, what's the name of the game? It's like a city building game. Uh, I, uh, Suburbia. Suburbia is a really, really good game. I actually, I have it behind me. I don't know why I forgot what it was called. Um, I, I, I've played it a few times with my nephew and niece. And basically in that game, you kind of draw these like, there, there's standard ways to score points and stuff like that. And there's a few publicly available like victory conditions where you get extra points and you score points just from playing the game. But also each player has like hidden victories that only they see and only they can score. And part of the game is like trying to figure out well what's your mission to score a win and uh, like i don't i don't know what like thing you have in your hand there that's kind of directing your way to play but you might spot someone buying a lot of yellow tiles and then you're thinking hmm this person is buying a lot of yellow tiles i might need to do something about that to stop them from getting points to beat me and i think that really helps i i think there's the problem isn't that the game is decided so here here i'm going to sum up my thoughts here the problem is not the game is decided 20 to 30 percent before the game is over the problem is that there's no uncertainty right there's no um the problem is that it is certain and i have all of the information that i need to make the determination that i've won the game whereas it would be far more interesting if there was a little bit of mystery if i wasn't sure if i was going to win if the game could somehow hold me in suspense as turns go through that's why i think um that's why I feel like, man, what I would really love, and I kind of talked about this before, is maybe like every era, random objectives could come up that uh, might, you know, help decide who the winner of the game is. You could have like a version of Civ where instead of it's like a... Uh, here's what I would love. I would love the score victory to be reworked. Is basically what I'm trying to say here. Instead of this just being like, oh the game timer ran out and you like built this many of this thing have like at the start or end of every era have like a global mission pop up and whoever like like the um 
like the competing things that pop up, whatever they're called, the emergencies. You could have like a, like a global emergency. So whoever uh, gets X, Y, Z, um, wh whoever gets, whoever builds the most world wonders in the ancient era gets a hundred score points, right? And that contributes to a score victory. And if you reach a certain threshold in your score victory, you just win. I don't know. I think, I think that would be a really interesting one because there's a little bit of suspense you might know man i really need another 200 points but you don't know what the next mission to sort of decide if you're going to win is i don't know if that would solve the problem but i think that's like an idea that like a developer of a 4x game could learn i feel like 4x developers could learn a lot from the board game space um and they probably do they i'm gonna be honest, like Probably all of the 4X developers ever were avid board gamers. I would be I would be incredibly surprised if they weren't. There is the Space Race Civic Unlocked, which gives us access to the Satellite Broadcast Civic. We're going to go ahead and take that in. And I think at this point, Public Works is a little bit unimportant for me. The game is so close to finishing that I don't no, no longer really need builder charges. I could probably actually swap that for Skyscrapers, but uh, this will get replaced with a more important card very shortly. And that also obsoleted military research, which is fine because I, I don't really need research anymore. I'm kind of beyond it. It's no longer necessary for me to generate a ton of science for me to win. I've kind of taken everything I need. So I can probably just plug in luxury things like logistics to allow my builders to move around more efficiently and maybe shave a turn or two off of actually improving my tiles. Ah, lovely. Another great musician. I also have the faith now to go ahead and purchase another rock band. Perfect. And like usual, I just take the great work of music out of my capital, pop it in somewhere else, and then immediately create another one. That is the power of um, doing these theater square festivals and finishing them relatively quickly. Ah, I finished the theater square in here. Ooh, I'm going to want to move Reina out of here. So I'm going to go ahead and purchase the amphitheater, go ahead and purchase the archaeological museum, immediately purchase the archaeologist, switch Reina, grab her, Put her into Nanjing. And then we'll do the exact same thing over there in five turns to be able to grab up all these artifacts that are laying around. Plus three error score from picking up an artifact. And it is a barbarian artifact. The fresco. Excellent. I've also just about to finish this great wall that spans a, a whole island, actually. I kind of wanted to make a big loop of great wall but I kind of misinterpreted how it works, which feels bad, man. Um, yeah, you know what? Let's grab the seaport in here as well. That'll be fun. That'll just like make the, the tile yields in here even more crazy. Nice. So we just got ourselves a golden age. Uh, probably not a super important one. It's not the um, atomic era golden age that typically allows you to get extra tourism from your world wonders that have governors and from your national parks. I was going to take reform the coinage again because it represents about 300 gold per turn. We're making 671. I refresh the counter and I make 900. So eh, about 200-ish, 230-ish. All right, let's have a look here. Uh, let's try... Uh, yeah, let's try Space Rock and that'll be the War Spiders. Also picked up another one of these guys. Uh, this is Franz von Hipper. Get myself a free battleship. I also completed the National History Museum. It could be worth it to spend some money on some of these great works over here. I'm not sure if that's what I want to do. I kind of like to talk to myself a little bit as I play. I kind of speculate on what I might do. Really, really though, at this stage of the game, it's about just kind of getting through the turns efficiently, making sure you're not messing up, making sure you're not letting any AI just run away with the game. Uh, and in fact, I just realized that I won the game. <laughs> well, that's it for this one. Uh, I just have to hit the end turn here and the game will be over. Hold on. I may as well have a little bit of suspense and get as much score as we can, right? Let's get another Chinese artifact. And, uh, yeah. Let's go ahead and get you into the water. Grab that one there. And this will be a barbarian. I always try to get a mixture of things. Don't always try to get the one of the one particular type of artifact or whatever. Can I complete this wall? Beautiful. And we may as well go ahead and keep stealing money from Washington. And by the way, I really want to point out how much stealing this money really helped me this game. It, I feel like it was a huge contributing factor in my success here was being able to steal all this money from the AI. All right, there's an Antonio Vivaldi great work. And we'll just create this battleship. Can I please end my turn? There it is. I should get the windscreen. And there it is. 
there we have it, the Chinese Empire has won the game. I shall go ahead and take a moment here just to show you a couple of the graphs. I really like the buildings constructed graph. Um, how you can tell you're doing well on Deity is if you are constantly, like you'll be behind for say the first 50 to 100 turns and then beyond that you'll start to catch up and then get significantly ahead of the AI. If you can pull that off, you're doing really, really well. Uh, cities captured, don't worry about that one. Another good one to look at is Great People Earned. You're going to be behind in the early game, but if you're playing well, you should also overtake all of the AI in the game at a certain point. Faith is a little bit less important unless you're going for religion victory. Uh, gold, you should always have the biggest, spikiest graphs because you should always just have the most gold as the player. The AI is very, very exploitable in terms of, uh, in terms of taking their money from them. Uh, player science, this is depending on the game that you want to play. I got pretty lucky this game and um, was able to get really, really good science without even really trying to get really good science, mostly just due to, ab you, due to abusing Pingala. And you typically you typically want to look at the units killed and units lost. And and really what I feel like holds back the deity AI is just how many like like just how many units they lose throughout the game. You can see here, um these guys were just constantly losing units. Like every few turns they were losing units to one thing or another. I lost, I think, in total two units this game. And I, I feel like a, a big way to improve the Civ AI would be if they could just keep their units alive. They would play so much better. Um, another one is Wonders Constructed. Obviously, I'm playing China, so this graph is going to look a lot better for me because I was able to get a lot more Wonders early. Um, but typically, you, you want to be somewhere in the middle of the pack. And I'm trying to think. Player score. You should, you should always see this kind of a thing. You start off really, really far behind, and then you slowly climb up through the pack. Around turn 100 to turn 150, you should break away and skyrocket and score. This is my favorite graph. Total Religions Founded. Nice, extremely useful. Just one more turn, and we'll take a moment, just have a little peek at our empire. Sure. One of the things I really, really like about the mod that I use is, uh, that's Sucretact Simple UI Adjustments, is that it has this screenshot mode button. And if you right click it, it'll get rid of all UI elements except for city banners. But if you left click it, it gets rid of everything. And you still have all these yields, but if you press Y and then G, it gets rid of all of the, um, it gets rid of all of these sort of graphical UI elements and you can just start taking screenshots of your empire. And if you turn the graphics all the way up, I think I have a few graphic settings, not all the way up. But yeah, if you turn them all the way up, you can kind of just take these really, really nice screenshots. Like, uh, like here is like a wide shot of my empire. And uh, I might even use this as the thumbnail. Although I tend to find people appreciate zoomed in thumbnails. Uh, like for example, ooh, this is a really nice one. Like you just get to see all the wonders that I built in my capital. Like I built six wonders in my capital. That's like a crazy amount. But there you go. That's the thumbnail for this video. I thank you guys so much for watching this series. Go ahead and leave a comment down below because it'll be a couple of days until I start my next series. And uh, let me know. Let me know what you'd like to see out of the next series. I might do a stream before I start the next series. So I'm going to gather up a little bit of information. I'm not going to jump right into another series. You've also got the Wonder Tier List video to look forward to after this one. Uh, yeah, so just throw down your ideas. Let me know how you thought about the series. Is there a particular way you'd like to see me play? I know we did a couple of... I'm, I'm going to try to make sure I do a domination run or a religious run next because I did two cultural runs back to back and I think people are getting a little bit you know antsy that I've been doing that uh, but I'm going to go ahead and call that the end of the episode I love you all this is the end of the series and I'll see you guys next time bye bye